ATS Network Management. And um, I'd like to say a big thank you to ATS and SolarWinds for making this possible. And uh, today we have two great speakers who'll be, who will be uh, presenting on optimizing operational excellence with leading SolarWinds network management software, as well as keeping an eye on mission critical applications with SolarWinds. And uh, they, at the end of, towards the end of it, they will also discuss SolarWinds partnerships. Uh, please note that we will have a Q&A session at the end, but as we go along, feel free to post your questions and comments using the Q&A feature. And without further ado, I would like to call on Glenn Lazarus, CEO of ATS Network Management, to begin the proceedings. Um, Glenn, I think you can take it from here. Morning all, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. I'm very excited to be chatting with you all today. Also very excited to have Tony Johnson on the call. Tony is the product manager at SolarWinds. And uh, Tony is no stranger to, to us. In fact, Tony joined us uh, almost five years ago now, I think in South Africa on one of his uh, worldwide trips in his previous guise as I think uh, one of the senior engineers on the on the team in, in SolarWinds. Is that right, Tony? Yep, that, that, that's right. Remember it uh, well. And uh, looking forward to the next opportunity to, to visit you guys there. So in that particular trip, we took uh, Tony to, to Soweto and to the cooling towers where we have bungee jumping. <laughs> he didn't have the courage to actually go up and jump. He just stayed at the bottom and drank some really cool beer, which he, which he loved. So, uh, Tony, uh, I have fun memories, and I'm sure you do too. Uh, ab absolutely. Um, and and I, I could repeat that um, with the absence of the jump as well next time. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us on the call for technical questions is... Uh, Technical Director, Pranil Padiachi. So thanks for joining us, Pranil. Thanks, guys. So just um, by way of introduction, I think part of uh, the learning curve that we've, we've found over the last uh, year or so has been very interesting. We found that you know, many businesses have been forced into digital transformation. And most of this as a result of the epidemic uh, that, we, that we've been exposed to. But clearly, there are two standout factors. The one was organizations had to pivot to the environment where they were much more reliant on the internet. Also, changing from organizations that were retail outlets where customers would come in to their store and moving to online capabilities, employees and needed to ensure that the, uh, their staff, employers needed to ensure that their staff were able to work from home and also study from home. Huge, huge change in terms of students, uh, you know, the way they learn. And all of this had major impact on networks. So there was a huge change and organizations had to roll out and pivot and make sure that they could cater for the new reality. And networks became more and more uh, pivotal. There was more importance laid in making sure that network connectivity was up 24 by seven. You know, previously in, in the good old days, we would work maybe, um, you know, a six, seven hour day at the office, but now people were working at their leisure in their own time. So instead of networks availability primarily during work hours, networks needed to be available 24 seven. So traditional network management was driven by engineers. So techies that were sitting in the back room and analyzing and being able to push out and see how the networks were running. They dealt with issues on demand. Um, it was difficult to produce meaningful information. They were also very network focused. So they only used to look at dealing with issues as, is my network up or down? Is it functioning? There's also limited integration into applications like Help Desk. And these systems produced lots of statistics and reports. Sadly, a lot of these reports, nobody really looked at. And another important thing was the alerting. Alerting is fundamental to a, a, a network management system. But if you have poor alerting, if there are too many alerts, then the detail of being able to resolve issues instantly and being able to manage the environment becomes a lot more inefficient. Now, statistics and a lot of research has gone into understanding how 
organizations operate and the fundamental costs behind running these organizations. We found that 29% of bandwidth, of IT bandwidth, so the teams within, IT, within the organizations, the IT teams, spend 29% of their time dealing with digital performance issues. And for large organizations, though we're talking here, organizations in the Fortune 500, we're talking about uh, organizations that are in the top 500 in, on the, on, in Africa and, and organizations like that, we spend over two and a half million dollars being able to manage this environment and pouring resources into this on a constant basis. So the costs of managing enterprise networks are not cheap. And network performance needs to be able to deal with this and provide the necessary resources to make this as efficient as possible. So you have a very fragmented environment. You have many organizations that have very complex networks. They have the network infrastructure, there's the application environment, there's the servers, the databases, the, the storage environment, all the virtual environments and the cloud environment. And organizations tend to have many tools. In fact, it's been found that 25% of large organizations have more than eight tools that they're using to monitor the environment. Now, by way of a, of a poll, maybe we could just pop up the first poll there. And if you would like to just answer the first question, we'd love to see your response. So the first question that we have for today is, how many network monitoring or management products have you deployed in your business or in your customer's business? So if you guys can just punch in your responses there, we'd appreciate that. I really like that um, that diagram there, Glenn, it, because it, it it highlights the complexity of all of our customers and and all networks, regardless of size, right? So you know whether I'm a a, a small business with an online presence or a, a large uh, enterprise, there's always some aspect of network application infrastructure and internet connectivity you know, out to cloud services, whether that's to AWS or Azure or Office 365 um, or for the purposes of, of backup. But this diagram here really highlights all of the different touch points of service delivery, uh, regardless of the number of employees, um, because we all depend upon you know, server OS and, and some form of database and storage to, to support our applications. So really, it, 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 it is a complex environment for uh, IT organizations of, of all sizes. Yeah, I think that's, that's very important, Tony. Uh, you know, we're not talking just about enterprises. We're talking about any network environment that is mission critical to run organizations. And today, you know, the question is, um, are there any networks that aren't mission critical? We're so reliant on, on our networks. We need to make sure that they all operate 24 by 7. So the key here is, you know, the customer experience, the end user experience is vital to making sure that, uh, and if you can maybe hide that poll, thanks. Um, if the, the customer experience is key to the success, what we know is that there's so many components that sit inside an enterprise network. Obviously there's the network itself, but behind that you have mobile apps, you have websites, you have the back office, you have the database, you have the servers, you have the storage and many components that go into it. If any one of these components are not reliable, then the end user experience is poor and the custom experience leads to, you know, the, the end user saying the infrastructure is not efficient. We need to make sure that these environments are running efficiently. And how do we make sure that these environments are running and that our customers and our end users are satisfied with the response times that they're getting. So we need to make sure that we have an integrated monitoring solution we can analyze and we can manage. But this is, what, what's fundamental to this environment is we need to be able to reduce the finger pointing because you know what, what tends to happen in the uh, IT environment is the first thing is something goes down and everybody's pointing fingers at each other. So the network guys are saying it's not the network. The database guys are saying it's not the database. And the database guys are saying, no, it's the server. And so we go around in circles. 
So key to ensuring that we have a great solution and to be able to monitor and ensure the networks are running efficiently is to be able to reduce the finger pointing, to be able to have drill down capabilities, easy visibility, and make sure that our customer and end user experience is simple and easy. So what's important is to take a very complex environment that we spoke about and that Tony mentioned with all these different components and bring them into a simplified, easy to use, visible uh, environment where you can manage the networks simply and easily. So you have an integrated visibility approach and then you have a fragmented approach. We looked at some of the uh, environments where you have a number of different applications all running different types of engines and they don't talk to each other. So one needs to make sure that you have an integrated approach. But key to the success of this is what, is, what are the capabilities required within the enterprise environment today? We've been having many, many conversations with our partners and with our end users. And some of the key factors that come out are the need for a real-time, proactive, preemptive, and predictive solution that not only provides what happened yesterday. We don't want to know about the history. We need to know what we're going to be faced with tomorrow and tonight. And the networks need to be able to provide for that infrastructure, and we need to predict how to cater for those environments. So if we need to provision additional resources, if we know that we have certain bottlenecks at certain times of days, we need to be able to provide that information. Those are key things. Another very important fact, and we, in these conversations that we've been having, not only with engineers, with CEOs, with CTOs, with people from different aspects and different personas within corporate world, the key is that each one of them need to see only what they need and make sure that if they need drill down capabilities, they have it. So to ensure that you have, for example, in an exco environment, executives don't want to see all the, the, the nitty gritty of how the network's running and if there are any errors on a line and detail. They want to know, they wake up in the morning, open my screen, whether it be on a tablet or my device, I have a quick look at my network and I see, is it running efficiently? Yes and no. Do I see green lights? I'm happy. Then we need to make sure that from a, from a different perspective, the engineers who are responsible for uptime, that they can see where the bottlenecks are and only provide them with that relevant information. You can't have a product that is one product that has one interface for all. It needs to be integrated into ITSM and Help Desk. It needs to be customized so you can make sure that it meets those requirements of the changing organization. Also, prioritize of notif notifications because having a thousand notifications of a device being down isn't going to be efficient. We need to know which is the device. If it's a router that's gone down, we need to know where that router sits and only get the notification about that particular device. It could be an application, it could be a server. But also fundamental is the solution should not be vendor specific. It can't be hardware specific either because the corporate world of today have so many different vendors and different devices that they're utilizing. It needs to be something that is open-ended that can read information from multiple vendors. Also need to cater for the new now, the new reality. It's on-prem was, you know, until last year, everything was, the majority of things were on-prem. But today, we are on-prem and we're cloud, and we're moving in and out of those at, uh, at the speed of light. Today, we're on-prem. Tomorrow, we're 50% cloud. We need to be able to monitor. We need to be able to alert, and we need to be visible. We need to see what's going on. And my favorite that comes out in many of our meetings is our end users should not be our first alerting tool. And this is, you know, I know Tony's chuckling there because, you know, generally what happens in organizations when you haven't got a good alerting tool is the first time that we know that there's a problem is when we get a flood of calls coming into our help desk. So first alerting tool must not be the end user. A first alerting tool needs to be looking at the thresholds. We need to be able to customize. And in order to deal with that, Today's tools need to also have AI built in, need to have machine learning, 
they need to have intelligence. It's not just a piece of software that is filtering information. And, and in preparation for this uh, discussion, um, I, I did a quick search on the web last night. And I said, well, I said, hey, Siri, or I said, in fact, I said, hey, Google, tell me what is network management? And it came up with thousands of screens of all different layouts of all different pictures of what networks look like. And that's part of the problem is that there's so many different layouts. Everybody's just got so much to view. We need to be able to change that. We need to make sure that this information is efficient, it's clear, and our end users can manage it. Now, these discussions that we've had are with many, many different organizations. And we're seeing another important factor is our peers are very important in sharing and making sure that people know what are the top tools out there. Today, we're talking with Tony from SolarWinds, and a key factor here is SolarWinds is ranked as the number one software management vendor out there. Key to making sure that network management, in the network management arena, SolarWinds is number one, as recognized by our peers, and also challenger in many of the quadrants. So SolarWinds has really made an impact in this particular market. Now, final point before I hand over to Tony is to say, the environment needs to be a, you know, a single pane of glass. And we've spoken about this on a few occasions, but I think key today is the single pane of glass is reality. We need clear visibility. We need to have a system which is vendor agnostic, that we do not, we're not linked to saying, if we use one vendor's hardware, that we can't use management systems that create visibility into all of these different pieces of hardware and software, and that we can read that information across the enterprise. And another very important point is these network management systems should be network efficient. We don't want to be creating network traffic. Fundamental is it's a management system. It's not traffic generating. It needs to be thin and it needs to make sure that at the end of the day, we are as efficient as possible without creating additional load on the network. So having said that, possibly we can switch to um, the next poll. And I'm going to hand over to Tony. So the next poll, um, do you current, can you just switch on that poll for us, please? Right, so your current IT monitoring solutions identify root cause issues quick enough, quickly enough for you. So if you guys can lock in your answers and I'm going to hand over to Tony and say, Tony, if you can pick up from here and- Thanks, Glenn. Do, I'm just curious, do, do we have any results from the, the first uh, the first poll there? Are we, are we able to see the, 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 the percentage answers from the first poll or, or do we need to, to wait till, till the end? Hi, Tony. Uh, we, we would have to wait till the, I would have to do a screen share uh, to screenshot that's fine. of it. Yeah. That's no, that's no problem at all. I'm just, just curious to see if it aligns with uh, everything that, that, that we hear um, you know, in, in terms of that fragmented approach, and uh, I, I think you know from, from Glenn's excellent overview there of the the, the complexity of even a, a small network. Um, most of our, our customers and, and people that we speak to have um, multiple products, either vendor supplied uh, solutions that only focus on that particular vendor's hardware, um, which then leads to, to that fragmented approach. Um, one thing I wanted to, to touch on, um, and a, a really, really valid point, um, as Len mentioned, the presentation of, of the data. You know, there, there is no real difference in the underlying uh, technology that monitoring solutions will um, leverage to do up-down status. You know, we, we've all done ping, we've all done trace route. Um, those, those fundamental network and um, protocols are, are what are used across monitoring solutions. But as, as a CTO or, or a CFO, you know, as, as Len mentioned, I just want to know, is it up? I, I don't need to see errors and discards on an MPLS link. I, I might not even know what MPLS is, um, but I, I need the, the big picture. You know, what is the, my service status? Um, and key to transforming that data is a, is a customizable platform. Uh, so SolarWinds are, are entire uh, IT operations uh, management portfolio encompasses not just network management solutions, but also um, right down through your application stack, 
um, from your application to your database and virtualization. It's, it's all built on a single platform um, with many customizable options to, to look at how you can simplify that data presentation through custom dashboards. Um, our entire uh, customer base is, is quite active um, on our community forum, thwack.com. For those of you who may not be aware, we run an annual uh, event called Thwack Camp. Um, this year, the subject matter for one of my presentations was tuning dashboards for the right audience. Uh, so I'm going to share a link in the, the, the chat there to this year's Thwack Camp, um, where you can watch back all of those sessions um covering lots of topics such as deployment and um, so in terms of of uh, installing something like uh, our network management offering um regardless of the products that you you choose to install it's a single installer that can be deployed on-prem or in the cloud so we do have um offerings on the aws and azure marketplaces but we also support deployment for those database technologies you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to remote data collection. Um, one of our latest features is called the Orion Remote Collector. As Glenn mentioned, it's um, you know, the need to, to have lightweight uh, and network efficient data collection. So this is an agent-based approach that, that allows us to cater for um, you know, low bandwidth or high latency links. If you have a lot of remote offices, uh, it's a very efficient uh, and fault tolerant way to, to collect metrics from uh, devices at, uh, at remote locations. So you have all of those uh, architectural features uh, across the entire product portfolio. Um, and we're gonna look at, at, at a demo of, uh, of some of those features there following these slides. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, screen two. Okay, am I sharing correctly there, Glenn? Is it the right? Yeah, looking good. It seems to be okay. Yep. Um, so just a couple of uh, of slides. Um, if you have any questions at, at any time as well, we we would encourage you to to use the, the chat feature there on uh, on Zoom. It it certainly helps us focus. Uh, at the end of the session and, and uh, ensure that uh, everyone has a, a clear understanding of, of what we're, we're discussing. So please feel free to, to drop any questions in the chat. Um, so in terms of, of simplifying you know, network management, um, you know, as, as we've discussed, the transformation over the last year ha has been rapidly accelerated. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of companies diversify uh, and need to have an online presence. Um, even you know, relatively small vendors uh, now need to, to, to leverage uh, you know, social media platforms as, as, as their go to market, uh, but up to larger organizations who have traditionally may not have offered services uh, online uh, are, are now needing to, to do so in order to, to sustain their, their business. And fundamental to that is providing network management uh, capabilities. So across uh, SolarWinds product portfolio, in terms of network management, um, there are six distinct uh, products, each offering um, unique features that uh, integrate uh, in, in a single platform. And a network management makes up just one piece of the entire service management when it comes to, uh, to IT. You know, it, it would be remiss of us if we did not mention you know, the need to deploy these services and uh, functions security. So security is at the, 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 the kind of core, one of the core tenants uh, across application monitoring, database performance management, infrastructure management, and network management. And all together um, across those, those five key pillars, um, we, we look at service management. So how do you deliver uh, and monitor your, your service delivery? Within the, the portfolio, Network Performance Monitor is by far uh, you know, our, our, our leading product for, for customers. This is the initial uh, journey um, that most customers will start with uh, for their, their monitoring solution because it's multi-vendor, um, provides a wealth of uh, distinctive features or distinctive competencies rather. 
Um, it being multi-vendor, um, it uses uh, standard um, protocols, as I mentioned, ICMP and SNMP to collect uh, our, our, our um, health and performance metrics uh, across the, the network. But one of the, the features that really speaks to me as, as you know, somebody who has uh, spent time as a, as a network engineer, as, as, a, as a software developer, um, and as, as someone who has delivered you know, services, um, is the ability to determine, is it the network or is it the application? For me, that, that's one of the, the key um, features that really allows us to reduce the finger pointing um, or speed it up, if, if you want to, to look at it in a different way. If, 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 you know, if you're working in a, a kind of a siloed team, if you have a, a network team and an applications team, uh, or you know, if, if, if you are like me in a, in, a, in a previous role, you were you know, the IT generalist uh, responsible for monitoring and, and managing an entire network and, and, and its applications, uh, you, you need a way really to distinguish you know, is it the network or is it the application? And, and one of those features of a network performance monitor um, is an application aware feature called NetPath. Um, it's shown here on the right hand side of, of this screen. Um, it, it goes beond NetPath, or, or sorry, not NetPath, uh, TraceRoute. Um, this is more intelligent. It, it's using a, a custom crafted TCP packet. So it, it actually simulates the, the application traffic on your network and, and shows you all of the layer three hops uh, along the way. Um, what's interesting here about this feature for me is its integration with our NetFlow traffic analyzer and network configuration manager products. Um, the keen eye amongst you there may have noticed there in the center of the, the diagram, it's highlighting a config change on, on router nine. Um, this is actually something I can show you in a little while on, on the, the online demo. Um, but it's that integration that, that shows me really historically along the bottom um, how my service was looking, what time it, it, it went wrong, uh, and the root cause of that was actually a config change. And we, we could drill down and look at, look at that config in, in more detail. So it's these types of insight features that uh, give a, a additional capability to the network engineer and the application engineer and IT generalist uh, and all consumers of uh, an integrated platform. So whether you're working, as I said, in a, in a siloed you know, network management, application management, database management type uh, organization, having one tool to share with your colleagues uh, and uh, other consumers to a, a agree and, and show that insight into the, the, the metrics and the problems that you're trying to, to troubleshoot. Um, Tony, so, so from just for me, when this is the, the, the net part is so, so important, so valuable. But something that uh, maybe we need to share or just expand on is how is it that you can actually show what's going on outside of the corporate network here? Yep. So, and that's a, a great point. Um, it's it's not shown on on this diagram um, in, in in great detail, but as, as Len mentioned, this can actually show hop by hop, not just through your network, but also through the, the entire service delivery path. Um, it does so because of that TCP packet, which will um, re return all of the layer three hops. So, as we'll see uh, later. As your traffic leaves your network boundary uh, and is being carried by your, your network provider, it, it will go through those hops again. Now we can't interrogate those devices for CPU and memory and hardware health and interface utilization like you can internally on your network, but we do actually return uh, you know, public information like BGP uh, for those nodes. So, so we can show you and return uh, phone number and email address for the administrators of those um, public nodes. It's it's quite a powerful tool as your uh, service provider, um, you know, will be using peering partners to to carry your traffic across multiple providers um, on on its way to uh, to the host. Uh, so being able to go to your service provider and ask for your traffic to be routed through a different carrier. Is is absolutely a, you know a, a very uh, strong piece of information to go armed with when you're opening a, a, a ticket. I wouldn't uh, say only strong. I think it's 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 huge because it's huge, yeah. all of a sudden 
you know, the, this information is generally hidden to the public and, and hidden to the corporate user as well, because the, the, the IT infrastructure know that you have an ISP out there that is giving you a layer to get out of your network. But that route and where it's provisioned and who's provisioning it is generally hidden because so many vendors and so many, um, you know, so many of the, the, the infrastructure people are sharing infrastructure. And here you can actually see the detail of how that network is traveling, how that net traffic is traveling, and how, if it's rerouted, what path it's taking. Yep, exactly. And um, it, it, it served that exact purpose um, actually very early on when uh, NetPath um, was used internally in our own IT organization. Um, we, we experienced a, a voice issue between our uh, EMEA headquarters in, in Cork in, in Ireland and uh, our, our head office in, in Austin, Texas. And our internal IT department actually shared a screenshot uh, of NetPath um, that, that showed that intermediate carrier and, and where the, the problem was. Um, this is from the online demo. This, this gives a little bit more um, of a better indication as to the, the typical use case. And in, in this case, it's, it's from you know, an, an internal Windows server in my network all the way out to a, a database on, um, on Azure. Um, and you can see the history of that connection here. Um, so straight away, your attention would be drawn to, to this time segment here when it was in a warning state. Um, it highlights the relevant um, portion of the, the hop. So we can see that we had three millisecond and 3% packet loss uh, on this hop at that time. Um, and grouped quite nicely here are 39 different nodes participating uh, in that AS with the ability to, to drill down into those. So now I can actually see exactly which nodes uh, who they are owned by. Um, if we go through our ISP here, uh, clicking on that node shows you the phone number and email address for the admins of, of those nodes. So you get massively detailed insight into not just your internal network, but your service provider and all of the hops along the way as you're uh, delivering those services. So quite a, a massively powerful um, solution to, to say it's not the network and it's not my network. It's uh, external uh, to, 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 to our, our infrastructure. Tony, you say, one, what, what we, what, sorry, go ahead, Pranil. Sorry, uh, Tony, I just wanted to mention as well, uh, it's not really necessary for uh, network engineers to, you know, uh, just look at this uh, diagram. They can actually get proactive alerts via email when a certain, you know, segment of this net path goes down. So uh, that email or that SMS can tell you exactly uh, which part uh, has gone down for the Absol path. Ab absolutely, yeah. Um, it, it, it's not necessary to, to keep eyes on on, yeah. uh, on, on these at, at, at all times. Um, you know, very nice to look at visually, um, I, I, sure. I, I do say, but, you know, to, to, to have that up on a, on a screen and try and see that detail from afar, you know, it, it, it doesn't offer much value, but uh, it is possible, of course, to, to, to get uh, alerts based on any of these metrics. Um, and those alerts can have multiple actions, like you mentioned, sending a, an SMS or an email um, and executing a script or, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in, in some instances, you know, if you have the configuration management module, you can execute configuration changes on your devices. Um, so that there is far more than just collecting data about uh, performance. It's providing users with the uh, functionality to take those remediation actions when alerts are, are triggered. Um, and first to, to, to kind of do that, um, you know, we, we need to extend what we're looking at uh, on, on the network. And, and the next piece of the, the network management portfolio um, is our, our network traffic analyzer. Um, so, you know, if, if as, as, a, as a network admin, if, if I were to, to, to go to the IT manager and say, oh, my, you know, my MPLS link is, is, is at 95%, uh, we need more bandwidth. I'm, I'm, you know, that request is going to be denied straight away. Right, uh, bandwidth is expensive. Um, it, increasing bandwidth is, is not the solution um, when your link is saturated. First, you need to understand, well, who's using my bandwidth? What are they using it for? 
Okay. Um, is it for valid uh, business purposes? Uh, can we maybe use technologies like uh, quality of service to, to perhaps rate limit some of this traffic that might not be high priority? And NetFlow Traffic Analyzer provides you with just that insight. It, again, it's multi-vendor. Um, NetFlow is, is a Cisco proprietary technology, but our, our NetFlow Traffic Analyzer supports SFlow, JFlow, IPFix, NetStream, um, all of those uh, flow export protocols that, that give you the uh, insight into the top talkers, um, the, the quality of service um, or class-based quality of service policies that, uh, that you might be using. Um, but also one of the key words there in, in the distinctive competencies is the integration. Um, if I were to go back to NetPath, uh, and show you an interface on an internal device that's sending NetFlow, I can now see the, the top three um, talkers for both transmit and receive utilization on those interfaces. So everything that we're looking at here is, is about integration. It's understanding first, is it the network or the application? Is it a bandwidth issue or is it something outside my network? Is it due to a configuration change? Um, how do we make that root cause analysis more, more intelligent uh, through, through that data gathering, but also through how we present that within the, within the UI? Um, I'm just conscious of, of, of time and, and you know, we've got lots of, of great topics we could, uh, could delve into. Um, I think it might be more beneficial actually just to jump straight to the to the online demo and have a look at these uh, use cases, Glenn, do you think rather than, yep, I've, right. I've, only, I've only got two more slides, but uh, I, I think I could cover those probably more efficiently in the, in, in the demo if that, uh, that's Go for it. Great. Uh, so one, one of the most recent features and, and one uh, that, that uh, I, I suppose I'm, I'm a little bit more passionate about as, as, as it was one of the, the features uh, entirely under my remit as, as I move to, to product management um, is the modern dashboards within Orion. So we, we, we spoke uh, a lot about the, the need to present our, our, our data in a meaningful way to, to our users, but also provide drill down capability uh, for, for those technical folks who, who, who need the granularity uh, and to, to pinpoint the, the root cause. So modern dashboards within Orion provide us with a very easy to use and customizable interface that I can drag and drop across the, the entire canvas. So for me, this is, the, this is the big picture. You know, what's my current MPLS link utilization? Nice and easy to see across on a, on a large screen. Everything is green, uh, you know, warning or, or critical. So these um, widgets across the top here, these are the, the KPI widget. Um, these are threshold driven indications or indicators of uh, key values that you'd like to observe within your, your network. Um, complementary to that then are the alerts that would be based upon these thresholds or these values. Okay. Uh, so you can choose to alert uh, based upon you know, a simple threshold breach, or you can choose to uh, use dynamic thresholds. Uh, so, you know, Glenn mentioned a, a good point there, the kind of AI ops or, or the intelligence uh, around how you track and, and use these values. Um, if you have, let's just take a, a, a network interface again as, as a basic example, but in reality, it's, it's just a, a value. Um, you know, if that sits happily at 50% for a, a period of, of, of time, uh, and increases to 70% utilization. That, you know, it, 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 there's still capacity there, but something has changed on the network. Something has changed in the profile of that link um, and its bandwidth utilization has actually, you know, increased by 50%. Uh, is that something I need to be aware of? I, I would say absolutely yes. Um, you know, is it critical? No, but it, it could be indicative of, you know, um, malicious activity or potential abuse of bandwidth and something that I might want to investigate. So the Orion platform comes with uh, the ability to use dynamic thresholds. It, it means we learn what is 
the typical profile for a metric. So something like CPU, memory, interface, uh, or, or volume utilization. Those, those types of metrics can be uh, based upon dynamic thresholds so that you can preempt uh, any potential um, performance degradation due to those capacity issues. Uh, and the, the modern dashboard here is providing us with the, the operational status summary across all of those uh, types of metrics. Um, the ability to present that data either in, in time series uh, or in an easy to understand proportional chart, be it a, a pie chart, a donut chart, you know, or a, a, a bar chart. Um, so I just wanted to, to kind of show this as a, a simple means to roll together all of that you know, complex uh, data collection in a, and distill that into an easy to understand um, at a glance understanding of my entire IT environment and, uh, and services. So Tony, would this sort of dashboard be utilized in a, in a not kind of environment or what do you, what do you, what do you suggest then? Yeah, we, we see it used in a, in a number of different ways. Um, it, it is more suitable to a NOC um, simply because it, it allows me to take any one of these values and display it across the entire canvas if I wish to do so. Um, so it's quite customizable in terms of the, the layout. And um, so it is quite suitable for, um, for a NOC view. Um, but we do see um, these modern dashboards used as, as a means of providing reports. So any, any of the dashboards or views within Orion uh, can be emailed uh, on, on a scheduled basis. So if I wanted to check the status of this uh, every hour via email remotely, you know, I, I can set that up. Uh, so we see, we see a, a, a mixed use cases for these uh, modern dashboards. Also, the other, the other thing that is also vital today is you know, we have so many external connections coming in, the co connectivity, the VPN connectivity. How do we display details within that? Yeah, so I, I think that would probably speak um, best to the Orion mapping functionality. Um, if we were to start off at, at, at a high level here uh, and look at our, our global sites, okay, so we can see the topology between those uh, locations. But we can also drill down, um, as you mentioned, that need to, to further um, get uh, in, into the woods, as it were, uh, across a, a particular region or a particular um, uh, application. So Orion Maps provides me with that, uh, that topology and link utilization, but also the, uh, the drill down capability um, whether it's uh, to a, a, a map or an, an additional uh, entity, uh, such as a group or a specific uh, application. Um, one of the, the better examples here, I think, is of Active Directory, if we look at uh, Orion Maps here. And I suppose just to, to, to clarify the distinction between you know, platform and product. Uh, so the Orion platform itself Know, has features that support modules like maps. Um, while I'm looking now at uh, a, a Active Directory map, it could just as well be a network topology map. Okay? It, it's a feature that's available to the entire product um, portfolio. Um, what I really like about this map, and this applies again, just to reiterate, not just to applications, but any map that you create within Orion has the ability to uh, use a feature we call time travel. This is really powerful because if an issue occurs you know, I, um, over the weekend, we, we come in on a Monday and you know, users can't log on, there's a domain controller unreachable, um, I can view the history of the, the, the map. It allows me to go back in time like we did with NetPath and look at the status uh, of that map. So temporarily here on March 3rd, you know, at 1.09 a.m., everything was green. Shortly afterwards, it, we can see exactly the status changing there on those nodes. Um, so it's building up a visual picture of what happened. Um, it even allows me to, to play that uh, on a loop. 
Okay, so I can now see over time what was happening and the impact that had on other systems as uh, servers were going up and down, as links were being utilized. Uh, so quite, quite, a, quite a nice feature to, to help me uh, do that forensic analysis. And finally, the and apologies if, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Um, but so many good, valuable features. Uh, I just want to, to make sure we, we touch on them all briefly. Um, one favorite of mine is the capacity summary. So again, using that uh, statistical analysis, um, providing you with uh, alerts and reports ahead of time to identify potential uh, resource constraints. So um, quite quickly here, you know, CPU capacity problems, uh, my uh, East data center file server 01 CPU load, you know, is, is going to reach a warning threshold in and around seven days um, based on its current trajectory. Um, in and around two weeks, it's going to be at critical and at four weeks, it will be at capacity. That's based on our uh, statistical analysis of historical data. Uh, each of these can trigger an alert as well to, to let you know that, you know, you, you are going to breach a warning threshold uh, for CPU or an interface, um, perhaps it's a, a volume or, or memory is more critical to you to, to monitor. Uh, so you can um, you know, get ahead of those problems, uh, increase capacity if needed to, or shift resources depending upon the uh, the actual problem. So Tony, just a quick question on that. How do you how do you measure that, or how long does it take before you've built up enough data to be able to make these predictions? Yeah, we, we typically need seven days uh, worth of, of data to perform the initial calculation. And then it aggregates going forward? Yep. So there's nightly database maintenance that uh, typically occurs at 2.15 um, a.m. For, for each Orion deployment where we um, roll up our, our detailed statistics into hourly, hourly into daily, uh, and perform that recalculation of, of baseline metrics. And is it possible to customize that as well? Yep. So the thresholds, you know, the, in terms of retention periods can be changed. Individual thresholds can be changed. Um, recalculation periods, it's, it's highly customizable. Um, some of it is, is hidden behind advanced settings, you know. Um, so while we make uh, the majority of use cases accessible through the, the UI, we, we, we do have some uh, what we call centralized settings um, that can be further used to, to kind of tweak, if necessary, uh, the, the behavior of, of the, the platform and, and features like this. Well, I think that's great. I mean, that talks to the sweet spot that we were discussing earlier, where we said you need to be able to look into the future because yep. you cannot just sit back and wait for the inevitable to happen when a CPU is overloaded or when a storage is overloaded. We're now able to report on this and give feedback real time and make sure that we have that prediction and see into the future. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that actual uh, capacity dashboard itself could be sent as a, um, as, as a report, but we also have hundreds of out-of-the-box reports for, for all users and uh, capacity, excuse me, So Tony's actually yeah. just um, refueling. Why refueling. is refueling there? <laughs> um, I think what, what is important is what Tony's been showing to us today is the the main dashboard of the SolarWinds engine and all the different components that plug into it. So you can actually view each of the different modules, whether you're talking about networking, application, storage, database, and so on. Each one of those are uh, available through the central dashboard. Yep. Um, one one slide um, again. Just uh, conscious that we're 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 almost at at the end of of our time. Um, pricing, you know, uh, very important to to understand. Uh, you know how we price these these products. Um, one of, of the, the key areas of focus for us, or, or, you know, as, as we know that organizations are changing, is our move to uh, provide subscription licensing. So everything that we've looked at today, all of the Orion modules, whether it's network or applications uh, or, or virtualization or storage, all of these are available 
either through perpetual licensing, uh, you would buy it up front. You know, it, it's it's typically a capex cost for an organization, um, or can be purchased on a subscription basis, which uh, allows you to allocate that towards you know typically your your opex um, budget. So, as as a means of you know supporting our customers and 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 their need and desire for more flexible licensing. Uh, all of all of these products can be purchased through uh, through subscription. It, it's not a SaaS solution, you know. So when I say subscription, it it means you you still deploy it on prem or in the cloud. Uh, you know, you provision your server servers. You can uh, choose your topology and and, uh, and and features, but the license itself um, can be bought either perpetual or or subscription based. So I think that uh, that was everything I, I I'd like to to, to cover. Um, Glenn, I could 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 do you know a few more a few more hours. Um, so it's it's always really enjoyable to to have these sessions together. Um, Tony, maybe just before you switch off, I think one of the one of the items which I think is on the you know the the tip of everybody's tongue today is how do you manage IP addresses. Yep. So IP address management is, is central to the, the Orion platform as well. Um, the uh, IP addresses tab here um, gives me access to my DHCP scopes, um, allows me to interrogate DNS servers and provides management functionality um, for, for those uh, that IP infrastructure. Uh, at a glance here, it, it's kind of showing me, you know, where my IP utilization is highest, um, whether that's on particular subnets, um, whether it's across, you know, something like a DHCP split scope here on the right hand side, um, but also into the con kind of configuration. So if I have any DNS record uh, mismatches, um, the, the the IP address management function um, I'd, I'd probably need like kind of 30 minutes to go through the, 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 the entire feature set, but um, one of my favorites really is the ability to request an IP address. Um, we created this feature particularly to, to solve the, the kind of workflow problems that organizations have around manually tracking uh, requests for IP addresses. This can now all be done uh, through this uh, IP address request workflow um, built in or can be done using the, the API for anyone in, interested in kind of more orchestration efforts. Um, there, there is a, a very robust API for the entire platform that could be used. Um, but the IP address request form here allows you simply to, to fill out the details. Uh, we'll have to populate the, the required fields here. Uh, brings me to, oh, of course, we have, sorry, my. Well, we, we have that disabled, of course, in the online demo, um, but it allows me to, uh, to request, you know, um, a, a range of IP addresses with, which then can be approved and uh, will be reserved within the, uh, the IP address management feature here where we go to manage subnets and IPs. It gives me a hierarchical uh, breakdown of, uh, of, of the subnets, so I can drill down, see the history of an IP address, so if something was in use, uh, when it was last seen on the network, uh, is it transient? Uh, again, this is highly integrated. I could potentially drill down to an IP address and show you the physical switch port it's connected to on the network and uh, actually shut down that port um, if, if, if needed. So as you can see, the look and feel uh, is the same as, as other features that we've looked at for Orion, but IP address management certainly one of the, uh, one of the, the many Orion modules there to help you manage. Uh, all things IT. Great, thanks, Tony. I think that that's really uh, very exciting to be able to see and to manage from a central console. The IFAM also can run as a totally independent module. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to have other modules. That correct? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, very valid point. Um, you you can have any one or all of these modules um, installed separately. Um, the, the value, of course, is in the integration. So, so by having all of these on a single server and single database, that is driving the, the integration and the connected use cases. But we do have many customers who you know, will just install IP address manager as a standalone solution. 
um, just to meet the, the needs of a, a particular uh, area of the of the business. Um, also, it is possible on a user uh, level to to customize these menus and. You know, maybe as a as a network engineer, I don't need to see server configuration. That's no problem. Uh, as an, an Orion admin, I can just remove that menu for for a particular user. Great. So, thanks, Tony. We're almost out of time now. So, just from a from a next steps point of view, if anyone has any questions or information, you're welcome to contact us directly. We'll pop up the details uh, for you later. Also to say that we have a number of partners as well as end users on the call. From ATS network management point of view, we deal uh, and work with, a, with partners and uh, any partners on the call, welcome to sign up or go into the website ats.co.za and complete the partner registration process for end users. We're happy to uh, talk to you and assist you in the process and introduce you to a partner that uh, knows the product and uh, can work with you guys to take it forward. So uh, I'm going to thank all, all the presenters today. I'm going to hand back to uh, to uh, IT News Africa. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Glenn. And um, Tony, thank you very much for that presentation. And I'd also like to thank everyone for being part of this. Um, it's been an insightful uh, uh, morning. And uh, please note that you will receive um, um, a video recording of this webinar by tomorrow morning at the very latest. So uh, keep an eye on your inboxes. And if you have any questions about SolarWinds or about ATS Networks uh, solutions, please reach out to them. You've got their email address. Glenn's email is glenn at ats.co.za. And uh, that's it from us. Thank you very much and uh, have a lovely day further. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Thank all. Bye-bye.